Namaskar. Welcome to Stories of Bengali Hindus. Uh, in this video, we will be discussing uh, the Tirtha Sthanas of East Bengal, starting with Langol Pond. So, Tirtha Sthanas or places of pilgrimage are an important, uh, visiting them actually, are an important part of the life of a practicing Hindu. They are usually accompanied by water bodies uh, in which Hindus believe that taking a holy bath in them would cleanse them of their sins and grant them punya or blessings. Tirthasthanas or places of pilgrimage are mentioned in Hindu scriptures which can be from the Puranas, the Tantras and certain other places may also become sacred spots or Tirthasthanas uh, because of a famous temple or let's say a famous practitioner, a sadhaka, who, who then makes that place famous or, or rather sacred that is. So before we uh, dive more into the Tithasthanas, we should talk about Acharya Raghunandana. So many of Bengal's rituals, uh, that is, uh, we have a tradition of eating 14 different varieties of leafy greens or we call them shak uh, during the Bhut Chaturdashi. So this is big, uh, this ritual and many other such customs and traditions among Bengali Hindu families have all been uh, mostly been codified by Acharya Raghunandana. So it is quite an, apath an apathy to see that there is no available image of Acharya Raghunandana on Google or at least I was unable to find it. But his, in his impact on the lives and the traditions and customs of Bengali Hindus have been innumerous. So he was a Smartha Acharya from Navadvip. Uh, Navadvip, by the way, was a center of learning, particularly famous for the Navya Nyaya tradition. And uh, many scholars from different parts of Bharata used to come and uh, learn at Navadvip. So, among Acharya Raghunandana's uh, writings, we have the Ashtavimshati Tattva, that is 28 Tattvas. Among them forms the Tithi Tattva. So, some of the uh, mentions of Tirthasthanas are mentioned in the Tithi Tattva or rather Tithi particularly refers to uh, an, an auspicious occasion, an occasion rather, which is decided by uh, the phase of the moon and the month in which it is occurring. So, Hindu festivals are calculated on as per their Tithi, the lunar phase of the moon based on which particular Hindu month it or even the, the constellation, the star in which it falls into. So we wouldn't be diving too much into these uh, nitty gritties, but we'll just basically explain you about which Tithi, uh, the Tithi of Langalband is famous. So I'm proceeding. The location. So Langalband is uh, located somewhat near to Dhaka and it lies on the banks of the old Brahmaputra river. In fact, the legend of Langalband is, is associated with uh, Parashurama, an avatar of uh, Vishnu, the Brahmaputra river and it is mentioned in the Kalika Purana. A uh, point to note here is that many Tirthasthanas, uh, particularly of uh, you can say Eastern India, uh, which includes Bengal and even Assam, will be mentioned in the Kalika Purana. So this Purana contains mentions of Tirthas, uh, particularly of this region. So the legend of uh, Langalband, uh, there are many different stories, uh, there are certain variations in the story, but they all uh, are associated with uh, Shri Parashurama. So let me discuss how the name came to be as Langal Bond. So Langal, Langol means a plow, Bond means a stop. So it is believed that uh, Sri Parashurama, who had committed the sin of matricide, and after committing that sin, his axe got stuck in his hand. So he later, uh, he went on in search of various Tithasthanas to, and to see like how could he wash away uh, his sin. So it is believed that Brahmaputra river at that at, at that time it was a lake and even geographically speaking it does originate from a lake. So Sri Parashurama took a dip in that lake and the axe got disattached from his arm. So he was cleansed of, the, of his sin. So he then uh, attached a plow to his axe and then pl started plowing a river, a root of a river uh, which is the current route of the Brahmaputra river. So it is believed that he stopped his plow at Langolbund, hence the name that has come up with it. There are uh, other uh, additions to this story, uh, one which particularly talks about how the river Brahmaputra uh, wished to see 
another river uh shitalaksha so uh, an important point to note here is that rivers are personified as uh women or or the fem or female figures in hindu mythology whereas brahmaputra hap happens to be one of the rare uh, rivers in which is depicted as a male so brahmaputra literally means son of brahma so brahmaputra comes down to witness S uh, sita laksha and S sita laksha appears to him as a an elderly woman who then reveals herself to be the young and beautiful sita laksha so this uh, did not please uh, parashurama so much so he ended up cursing the brahmaputra river again so brahmaputra pleaded to parashurama saying that uh, he helped him remove his sins and uh, so he, to to forgive him of his curse so parashurama then mentioned that uh, brahmaputra will not have uh, sin cleansing properties mo most throughout the year but only on one particular tithi that is that will be on the ashokashtami uh, that the sin cleansing properties of Brahm of brahmaputra river would be there and uh, which i will discuss in the next slide so yeah so langalbond uh, mahasnan the ritual bathing happens on the ashtami tithi in the month of chaitra as per the bengali calendar in the shukla paksha so shukla paksha refers to the uh, waxing phase of the moon and ashtami tithi re represents the eighth phase of the moon in its waxing waxing position and it happens on the bengali month of chaitra so this reference is uh, obtained from the book uh, dhaka ritihash by jyotindra mohan uh, mohan rai and this is from the kalika puranam so this says chaitre masi sitashtamyam yo naro niyatendriya chaitranta sakalam masam shuchihi pramatamanasah snati lohityatai lohityatoye tusa yati brahmanah brahmanah padam lohityatoye yasnati sakaivalya maban sakaivalya maba pluyat so this is the reference of the uh, tirtha of langalpand that in the in the month of chaitra uh, in during this particular tithi people anyone taking a holy bath in the river lohitya so lohitya also refers to the river brahmaputra other names would also would uh, of the brahmaputra river would be lohit or luit and this river has a very reddish tinge which ha might be visible from this image the sunset is giving it a very reddish tinge it is also referred to as the red river for this reason so uh, it from the same book by dhaka ritihash by jyotindra mohan rai he goes on to state tithi tatve likhito ache so it is mentioned in the tithi tatva that is by acharya ragunandana punar vasu nakhatra jukto chaitra masher shuklashtami te brish logne brahmaputra nader jole snan kora aboshyok পৃথিবীতে যত তীর্থ নদী বা সাগর আছে তাহারা সকলেই সকলেই ওই তিথিতে ব্রহ্মপুত্র নদে আসে সো ইট ইস মেনশন দ্যাট ইন দি পুনর্বাসু নক্ষত্রা সো নক্ষত্রা মিনস আ কনস্টেলেশন ইন দ্যাট পার্টিকুলার কনস্টেলেশন ইন দি মান্থ অফ চৈত্রা ডিউরিং শুক্লাষ্টমি উইচ আই মেনশন ইন দ্য স্লাইড ইন শুক্লাষ্টমি ইন দি ভৃশ্য লগ্না সো ভৃশ ইজ আ জোডিয়াক সাইন দ্য টর ইজ জোডিয়াক সাইন so it is very particular in, in which this particular tithi will occur so to take a bath in the brahmaputra nod so please note how it is mentioned as nod not a nodi nodi in bangla means a river a female river nod means a male river so brahmaputra is a nod not a nodi jole snan kora avashyak so it is essential to take a bath during this tithi in the brahmaputra river and in the year there are uh, many tithas uh, many uh, you know uh, rivers and even seas Uh, and during this tithi it is believed that they all come to the brahmaputra so which gives it very auspicious properties and it it also mentions a mantra which one should chant during the uh, the snana so let me uh, mention it prithivi vyam yani tirthani saritas sagaradaya sarve lohitya mayanti chaitre masi sitash sitashtamim ब्रह्मपुत्र महाभाग शांतनो कुलनंदन आमोघ गर्भसंभूत पापम लौहित्य मेहर सो दिस इज मेन्शन इन दि तिथि तत्व 
So I'll read a few lines from the the snippet from from this from that particular book. So puti bachhor bohu dur dosh dur deshantor hoyte oshonko Hindu nornari langol bonde shomagroto hoya oshokastomi the titri thoraj bhamaputo snan danadi koriya thakin. So it mentions how um, from many different Hindus come and take a holy bath uh, during this tithi. So it is also mentioned that onika bar tatpor dibosh e sthane Ramnomobir snano korin so ashtami is the eighth uh, lunar phase of the moon the next tithi happens to be ram navami Na navami meaning the ninth phase of the moon so that day is also considered auspicious and hindus take a bath even during rama navami in that particular sthana so brahmaputra tire langol bond ei shomoy ek mash kal porjonto onek dharma pran hindu tirthobasho koriye thaken so few hindus they even stayed in this location and this page mentions langol bond here Joykali Jagroto Debota. So one of the uh, grand, one of the, it's very difficult for me to translate Jagroto. Usually, uh, you can say a very sacred, a very sacred one of one of the goddesses of this place is Joykali, Jayakali. So Lagal Bondhe Nay Ponchomi Ghateo Bashunti Ashtomite Tirthoraj Brahmaputra Obogahon Koribar Jono Shankho Jatri So uh, there is a Panchami Ghat where the particular bathing occurs and it is said that yeah so how did this ghat get its name so yudhishthir and others the the pancha pandava so the pandavas are the five important characters mentioned five brothers mentioned in the mahabharata so it is believed that uh, during the time of vanavas when they were staying in a forest so they came to the tirtha of the lohitya river uh, so in search of the tirtha of, of the lohitya tirtha that is this uh, that is langal one and the place where they came and performed their snana, that is their bath, and they performed tarpana. Tarpana is the is a ritual that one dedicates to their uh, ancestors. They performed the snana and tarpana, so this became known as the uh, panchami ghat. So it is believed this gha particular ghat is believed to be in Langalbhan, which is a very holy ghat. In fact, a Langalbhan a Langalbhan has many ghats uh, in it, which are named after different uh, devi devtas and even one of the ghat. Uh, well, was named after Mahatma Gandhi. So it mentions that even, you know, how many people come to have darshan of the, of the ghats, ghats and, you know, and the particularly Panchami Ghat is also happens to be one of the more popular tithas of Langalbot. So in the in the in old books of Dhaka district, it, it is usually ma mentioned that the name of Langalbond is mentioned as the first Tithasthana. So this tells you about how Hindus consider this place to be quite holy. And in fact, as I could clearly demonstrate using references, how an Acharya from Navadvip, Acharya Raghunandana, mentions about the sanctity of this Titha. It is even mentioned in the Kalika Purana, Purana, and uh, you, we all know that how Ma Kali is greatly revered, particularly in Bengal and the eastern part of India. So these pictures are from a book called Romance of, of an Eastern Capital, Dhaka. So the pictures are from 1906 and you can clearly see the commotion and people visiting, you know, and taking a holy dip in the Langal, in Langal Bond. Uh, however, we also must mention that uh, this place, this holy place uh, was attacked uh, during 1964 and Hindus were attacked, particularly in that. So you all must be aware of our video on the 1964, 1964 anti-Hindu pogroms. So you can please refer to that. It is not to say that uh, such similar attacks did not happen in 1950 or 1971, but uh, there is a there is a report available called the recurrent exodus of minorities from East Pakistan and disturbances in India, a report to the Indian Commission of Jurists by its Committee of Inquiry. So you can please uh, Google that that report and, uh, and search it. You will come across it. It contains uh, first high, uh, like first-hand accounts of eyewitnesses of, of of people who suffered during what happened when they were targeted during 1964. So, yeah. So this uh, should conclude the video. It was a very short video uh, to conclude uh, to conclude it. So th an important takeaway would be to introspect, like why such a big tirthasthana has been forgotten from particular memory. So it is quite possible that. Uh, many refugees from Dhaka who earlier used to visit Langalband and in just a generation, in just two or three generations, this memory is essentially forgotten from the memories of Hindu, of Hindus. Uh, particularly, 
taking a ritual bath in reverse whether it be the baruni snan uh, which also happens during a similar time frame which happen or which if it has to be the uh, ashtami snan these are extremely sacred things so definitely these rituals are, are continuing in other uh, other teetha sthanas in india in in bharata but uh, langal uh, langalban serves you know has a very good link with as as i said uh, lord parashurama the kalika purana so it is quite disheartening to see such an important teetha being forgotten from public memory and secondly uh, it is also to note that in such a holy site you know the hindus have been attacked just because of their faith and there has not been any recognition or remembrance for that this is also quite ap- apathetic to see and uh, we must at least recognize these these at the very least thank you so much